Good afternoon. 60 Minutes reporter Richard Carlton has died after collapsing during a news conference on the Tasmanian mine rescue. We'll cross now to Mark Ferguson at Beaconsfield. Mark, can you tell us what happened? Yeah, Mike, there's a, a real sense of shock down here at the moment. Uh, Richard was working uh, alongside uh, the large media contingent covering this uh, story. Uh, there was a, a very large um, press conference just in the, the park beside me here. Uh, Richard uh, waited his turn and asked, as only Richard can, a very direct uh, question to mine management about uh, safety down there. Um, he didn't get much of an answer, but uh, he sort of peeled away from the press conference uh, and, and collapsed. Um, paramedics were rushed uh, to the scene. There were some paramedics involved in the rescue who were very close by. Uh, they arrived on scene. They worked on Richard for 20, 25 minutes. Uh, an ambulance uh, took him off to Launceston Hospital. The last you and I spoke, we were hoping and praying that he would pull through, but sadly he was pronounced dead at Launceston Hospital. Mark, it's no secret he hasn't been well lately. W were there any signs leading up to his collapse? Uh, look, uh, just before, um, as he was asking his question, a colleague of mine was standing next to him and said he, he was shaking slightly. But look, in the days leading up to, uh, to this uh, tragedy, uh, I've seen Richard uh, many times. I sat down and had a, a wonderful dinner with him only a few nights ago. He was, uh, he was pacing himself, uh, but he was um, very much uh, in good spirits, uh, telling great yarns. Uh, he was great company. And uh, look, I can, I'm, I'm, I'm shattered. It's, it's, it's very sad news. Yeah, indeed, and our thoughts and prayers are with his wife, Sharon, and his children. OK, Mark, uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back to you shortly. Now to the rescue operation to free Todd Russell and Brant Webb. Rescue crews are using explosives to break through more than half a metre of super-hard rock horizontally before starting on another metre and a half vertical shaft to reach the men. Here's what mine manager Matthew Gill had to say. They've, they're fired very regularly. At this stage we're limiting it to about 30 grams per shot, which as you can imagine is, probably, is not a lot, but that's necessary to advance this safely so that we uh, don't cause unnecessary vibration. Crack and crumble the rock, chip it away. What uh, sort of yes, it, it, it breaks up the rock. Centimetre by centimetre, is it? Uh, it's quite slow. Is there room and could you look at increasing the size of those uh, explosions? We're balancing that versus the vibrations that we'll create from increasing that charge. So Mark, for the miners, at least another day down there? At least another day down there and they're also being put to work. As uh, Matthew Gill just mentioned, they're thinking of increasing the explosive charge. It's uh, Brant and Todd who are letting them know if there are any uh, dangerous vibrations coming through and thankfully so far so good but yes there's seems to be many many hours ahead. Okay Mark we'll leave it there and we'll talk to you again shortly. Mark Ferguson there outside the Beaconsfield mine. We'll have more updates this afternoon and full details at six o'clock.